going to read that scripture yet, but I do want you to hold your Bibles open there. But that is the scripture in which during the great tribulation, God sends out seven angels and pours out seven vials of his wrath upon the earth. And what God did to Egypt back in the book of Exodus was a type and picture of this. What God did to Egypt in Exodus, he's going to do to the whole world in the tribulation. You talk about bad days, we, this world's in for some bad days. Now, me and you as Christians, we, we understand we may, we'll go through tribulation. We go through not the great tribulation, but tribulation. And we understand that we have the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, tonight, I'd like to talk about some famous plagues in history and show you what has happened in history since Bible times. And there was a lot during Bible times. God sent one plague in the Old Testament and 23,000 people died in one day. 24 in the whole plague. 23,000 in one day. So plagues are nothing new uh, but during Bible times and especially now. I'm going to mention a few, but just read these off, that took place since the apostles died and Jesus went back to heaven, the church age. The plague of Justinian, the Byzantine emperor. They, it was brought to Europe by rats on ships in 541 A.D. They were 10,000 people a day died. They had bodies stacked inside of buildings, just buildings full of dead bodies, and also just out in the streets. We ain't, we ain't seen nothing like that, where the stink of dead humans piled up on top of each other. 25 million people died. Then there was the Black Death, they call it, 1347. Again, sailors came home on ships, rats and flea, rat fleas, or flea rats, uh, rat fleas, were fleas that lived on rats and jumped on the humans and bite people, and the virus somehow hops, they call it, from animals to humans. That's how stuff like that usually starts. And that was called, uh, whole towns were wiped out. One famous poet wrote it, where that black death came from, and said, we saw black smoke coming into our towns. It's like the death angel was moving into those little, little communities, and everybody died. Back then, they didn't know anything about medicine, and they tried bloodletting to heal people. Like somebody was sick, they'd cut them, and they'd let them bleed because they thought that you bleed your disease out. And they didn't understand the Bible teaches the, the blood, the life of the flesh is in the blood. When you don't bleed yourself to, to live, you bleed yourself to die. Uh, we know that now. They knew it then if they had to believe the Bible. They also rubbed chopped up snake meat on sores and people that had because they didn't know. 50 million people died. Back then, that was over one half the population of Europe. One half. 50 million. It changed everything. And they said that people believed that it was the judgment of God on sin. They knew it. They were living wicked, living ungodly, and they knew it. And they believed that. The next one was the Italian plague, 1629. This is only 15 years, 6, 17 years uh, after the King James Bible was printed. Rats and fleas again. Bubonic. That word bubonic uh, means buboes. That, that's enlarged lymph nodes and swelling of the glands. And they brought it and from Italy uh, to Italy. They were quarantined people that were sick uh, in houses. They burned their clothes. And some of them were even banished to islands. They were sick. Just take them over on an island and leave them so everybody wouldn't die. 280,000 people 
dead. Then there was the great plague of London in the 16th century. Actually, this is weird, but it was 1666. 16666. 8,000 people dying per week. They quarantined people in their houses. They they would quarantine people in their house and say, you cannot come out. And they marked all those houses with a red cross. Isn't that significant? Isn't that significant? The red cross was marked, the ones that were in those, those houses. And, and 100,000 people died. Finally, the great fire in London, actually came from Italy to London, uh, London well, destroyed most of that and finally about put an end to it. Then there was the great plague of Marciella in 1720, also brought in by merchant ships. Rat fleas soon spread across the city. Thousands of people died, piles of bodies in the streets, and they had got the prisoners that were in prison. That was their job to come out and dig holes and dispose of all the dead bodies, 100,000 by 1720. And then there was the third pandemic of 1855. We're getting on up to nowadays uh, in China. Uh, uh, and again, rats on ships carried it to all six inhabited continents, 15 million people up even into the 1900s, mostly in China and India, and mainly spread by bites from fleas. Again, illustrating what I said this morning that God don't really have to exert himself very hard uh, to bump us off any time he chose to do so. And so tonight, with that in mind, let's look here at Revelation chapter number 16. And I'm not going to preach like I usually do. I'm simply just going uh, I'm, I'm to read this scripture, and uh, then I'm going to comment just a little bit on each one of these uh, vials. Revelation 16, 1. And I heard a great voice. Now you remember now, you're in chapter 16. You're right in the last part of the great tribulation. This is the time that Jesus said there had never been a time like it in history. There would never be a time like it again. The UN does not know this. Our political leaders, for the most part, don't know about this. I, I am glad for what steps have been made today. Declaring a national day of prayer. Thank God for that. That can't, do, that can't hurt us at all. And, and I'm glad. And presidents in time past, you can check it out in time past, in cases of national emergency, they told people, let's turn to God. Let's turn to God. Thank God there's still a few people that got enough sense to know that God is in charge and still on his throne. Now, uh, so he, this is in the tribulation. This is during the time when the mark of the beast is implemented that I talked about this morning. This will be the time when you can't buy or sell anything unless you got a mark in your right hand or forehead. This is, uh, we're just seeing little steps toward that in this. And we may see a whole lot more this week. There is no telling what we may see this week. And I don't know where this is headed. And God only does. And I'm, I thank God for leading us. I thank God for his spirit that won't leave us alone and will help us. Look here what he said. He said, I sold a great voice, and it said to the seven angels, verse 1, go your ways and pour out the vials, like a vase, of the wrath of God upon the earth. Verse 2, and the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. There fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. Now here, we're going to see there's going to be a plague there that people are going to break out in big old sores. And these sores are all on their body and it's a very grievous, painful sore. But the thing about this, since we're down near the end of the tribulation, this only affects the people that have the mark of the beast. So everything's backfiring. Everything's going south. Everything's going bad. We thought you was going to protect us. Where's all that healing power you said you was going to have? Uh, dictator and the wrath of God is going to come down and put this sore upon people. 
It's going to be bad. I mean bad. You think you can't get in a store now? You won't even be able to. No medicine, no treatment, no doctors, no hospital. Uh, there might be some for the very rich and very special, but not for the average person around the planet. Uh, you might wonder why the United States is not mentioned in prophecy, and it is because by this time there may not be no United States. I, may not, I don't know that, but I'm going to read you a verse in a minute that said the cities of the nations fell. All the big cities are going to fall when this big earthquake hits here in a little bit. Look here at verse number, uh, number three. Verse number three is the second angel. The second angel poured out his vial upon the sea. And it became as the blood of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea. That would be all marine life, all the fish, all the animals that live in water. And anyone in that, in the water, would die because of that second plague. Number four would be verse number, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, number three. Look at... Uh, would be, um, look at verse 4. And the third angel, this is the third plague, verse 4, poured out his vials upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. So the third angel comes out right behind that second one. All the water in the sea turns to blood, and then he gets to fountains and rivers, fresh water. And then people begin to scream and cuss and kill and fight and murder and hate. Worse than the world ever, 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 ever seen. But let's look at the fourth angel. Well, let's go ahead and read these first, verse 5 and 6. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shalt be, because thou hast judged us. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets and thou hast given them blood to drink for they are worthy. He said, you talked about blood. You want to drink blood. You Satanists want to drink blood. You think blood's cool. At rock concerts, you're about blood, drinking blood. Have some to drink. You've cussed God all these years. They've cussed his name. They've made movies blaspheming his name. They've, they've drug his name in the dirt. They've made fun of his church. They've laughed at his preachers. They've laughed at the Bible. And God said, all right, you asked for it, you got it. That's the loving Jesus, God of the Bible. That's the sweet, lowly Nazarene when his wrath is provoked. He said this, they killed all them prophets, hated all them preachers all these years. The Lord says, here you go. You say, well, that ain't fair. Leave me what the, you know what they said in heaven? And I heard another van, uh, out of the altar say, even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. Listen, brother, I'm not disagreeing with him this evening. I'm not, I'm not going to say, well, don't you think that's mean? No, whatever he does is right. And I'm going to say, true and righteous are your judgments, O Lord. Listen, brother, God could put every one of us in hell tonight and be just and true and right. He's been merciful so many years. He's, he's had an outstretched hand for 2,000 years. He's extended his mercy. He's let us go for years and years and years. But the day will come. There's mercies no more, and there's judgment. Verse 8, the angel number 4. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun. Buddy, you want global warming? Look at this. Power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. Now, I don't believe God would do that. You hang around and watch to see if he don't. You know how we know God's going to do that? Because every other prophecy that he said has already happened. All them prophecies of the Lord Jesus Christ happened. All the prophecies on the first coming happened. You can bank on it. The rest of them is going to happen. We forget how much God hates sin. We forget how much God is holy and righteous. We've lived in this generation to think, oh, everybody's sin, a little hair, a little, you know, fool around here a little bit here and there. No big deal. You can jack up. No, no, no. No, no. Not with God. God had Adam and the whole human race fail because one person put a bite of a fruit in their mouth. 
one sin, or two sin, two people sin, and it brought the whole human race under a curse. That's how much God hates sin. He scorched them with fire. Verse 9, and men were scorched with great heat. Now that's global warming. The present day global warming stuff is just such a small, minute warming that it ain't going to affect us a whole lot one way or another. And I don't, deny, I don't deny there's climate change, but it ain't got nothing to do with God or the Bible. The climate's always changed. It's always been like that. Well, I don't, don't get into that. There's two different sides to that. Just don't forget. Just don't forget. And who, who, which side you believe, check their political, and they're both usually wrong one way or the other. They're, it's political. It's called to bankrupt the country. And I do believe in some of it. But I want to tell you something. This is when God turns the heat up. This is when God turns the heat up. Seven times hotter back in the Old Testament, the sun's going to be. If it's, seven, if it's 90 degrees, seven nines, uh, 63, 630 degrees, that's hot. That's hot, brother. And men curse God. And look here what it says. And verse 9 they blaspheme the name of God which hath power over these plagues and they repented not. To me, that's always struck me. I've always been a, a I guess a, a, when God hits me, I'm ready to repent. I've always been that time. Listen, I, something happened to me. I said, okay, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I got it. I got it. You're God. I'm little Danny. You got it. I, you're, you're the winner. I'll bow down and do whatever you want. Whether we're living in a generation, that generation, they can be burning with scorching fire and pick up their fist and cuss God for sending it to them. That's a generation for whom there's no hope. They repented not. People say, boy, the coronavirus is it. We're going to have a national revival. Don't count on it. I hope we have a local revival. I'd like to see a national revival. Don't get your hopes up. Don't get your hopes up. There'll be some. Thank God some will be saved. Thank God some will get right. Thank God some will go. But don't look for no worldwide revival. It ain't coming. Now, verse 10, the fifth angel. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat, that's the kingdom of the beast, Antichrist, that's the 666 man, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. They chewed their tongues. Man, I've heard before, but I ain't never heard that bad. They chewed their tongues. Chewed their tongues is hurting so bad. And the boils and the fire and the burning and blaspheme the God of heaven because of their pains and because of their sores. You'd think they'd say, God, I'm sorry, I repent, help me. No, they just reach their fist up and cuss him. We're living in a generation that's so proud. They'll die and go to hell before they get down and admit they're God. I'm going to tell you something here this evening. Every one of them, every one of them, one day, every knee will bow and confess Jesus Christ. Every one of them, every rock singer, every politician, every atheist, every Republican, every Democrat is going to bow that knee and say Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father and they'll pick them up and throw them in the lake of fire. Brother Danny, you're preaching a judgment. Yes, I am. I'm a Bible preacher. I believe the Bible. Listen, the Bible ain't true. We ain't got nothing to preach. We ain't got no right to be a preacher. I believe God's book is true. And it's coming to pass one day. You better get saved. You better get saved. You better get saved tonight while you got a chance. You better get saved tonight while you got a chance. But you better get in while the getting's good, Mom used to say. You better get in while the door's open. The door's going to shut one day. Just like it did on that ark, going to shut. Look at verse number 12, the sixth angel. We've got two more. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. That's that river. It goes down through there, you know. And the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east, China, those other countries over there, might be prepared. A lot of debate on that. There's an army of, a, I think, a 200 million or something like that, 200 million soldiers on horses. And people laughed about that for years and said, oh, my goodness, that's ridiculous. People don't ride horses. Enough. Did you know everything's so technological now that they are saying 
that some of those countries are, are preparing for battle already on horseback because you can't track them. Leave all your cell phones, leave everything, all your stuff on so you can't be tracked in a machine or tanks and stuff like that, but ride no, no, no electronic equipment on it all and just horses across can attack. I don't know about all that, but that day is coming. And the, and the Bible said that the, the Euphrates River dries up and that way those kings of the east can march on Jerusalem and all Israel's going to be going to be surrounded. God gave that land to Israel. Don't ever forget that. God gave every inch of it. There ain't one inch of that land belongs to Palestinians. Not one inch belongs to the Muslims. God gave that land to Jacob his, and his offspring and the Jews, and he promised the land shall not be sold forever. They can fight. There's no such thing as a solution where they can all get along. Them people will never get along with a solution. God's going to have to fix that one day, and he'll do just what he said. And the blood's going to run up to the horse's bridles uh, that, that deep. Blood running that deep with that water and blood mixed during the great battle of Armageddon that we'll see here in just a second. Look at verse number 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial on the river Euphrates, and the water was dried up that the way the kings of the east might be prepared. Oh, my goodness. Look at verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. The dragon Satan. Out of his mouth come spirits. Look like frogs. A frog is a picture of an unclean spirit. Everything you can see is a picture of something you can't see. You know why there's all these ugly, weird looking animals in them? To show you a picture of something in the spirit world. A crow is a picture of an evil spirit. An owl is a picture of an evil spirit. A dove is a picture of the Holy Spirit. A raven is a picture of an unclean spirit. It's a picture of something you can't see. I know that them birds have been trying to break my house for days. It ain't done that in years. I've had birds banging their heads. They've done it today. I don't know if it's the time of year. Demonic forces trying to fight. I can tell you all some stuff that I've told some of the deacons a while ago where there is absolute demonic forces raging, trying to fight God's people. We forget how much the devil hates God, hates his word, and he hates anybody that loves it and preaches it and tries to live it and tries to tell He hates them buses. He hates them bus kids. He hates anybody trying to do something for him. He's going to work against you. This ain't no, this ain't no playground, people. It's a battleground. It ain't for the squeamish. We may be getting ready to separate the men from the boys. We may be getting ready to see a separation of them that play in church and them that mean business with God. Look at verse number 13. Unclean spirits like frogs come out of his mouth and out of the mouth of the beast, that's Antichrist, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, that's his right-hand man, or left-hand man probably. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth. There's your one world government. There's your one world government. All the kings of the earth get together. The leader, China, Russia, Japan, Spain, Greece, uh, uh, all the, uh, the, the continents, Africa, South America, North. We got to all get together. And these spirits go to these kings and they work miracles. And I don't know what all them miracles might be. Maybe they'll try to have some kind of healing power. Maybe they'll say, hey, we're going to all get together and we're going to fight against Israel and Israel's a problem and we're going to do away with the Jews and those people like that. I don't know. But I know one thing. He said here in verse number 14. And the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, he stuck it right here in the middle of this. As a reminder, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. He's coming soon, right after this, with his saints to judge the world. Verse 16, and he gathered them together into the place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. You've heard of the apocalypse? You've heard of Armageddon? Well, here we go. And the seventh angel, look at verse 7, 17, I'm sorry, verse 17. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. That's a weird thing. First one's on the earth, second one's on the water, next one's on the sun, next one's on, on the men, next one's on the kingdom of the east, and then he just pours one out in the air. That's interesting. Maybe some of y'all need to do a little studying on that. 
You hear a lot about this coronavirus stuff being in the air. You can't see it. Arable. I don't know. I don't know, but it said he poured his out in the air. And look what happened. Look what happened. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. Man, can't wait to hear that voice. We'll be up there listening to that. Somewhere probably getting to listen to that. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake. This is the big one, buddy. Such as was not since men were upon the earth so mighty an earthquake and so great. Now hold your place there just a second. This is the big one. This is the 40 on the Richter scale. This is the one that levels mountains and knocks cities down. Man, people think, oh, Lord, you're crazy. For just reading you the Bible. Look here what it says is going to happen. And the great city was divided into three parts. And the cities of the nations fell. New York, gone. Dallas, gone. Charlotte, gone. Miami, gone. San Francisco, gone. Flat. And great Babylon. That's the Roman Empire there in, verse, in the next two chapters. And the Catholic Church came into remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. That's 90 pounds. 90 pound hailstone. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail. For the plague thereof was exceeding great. People say God wouldn't do that. He's already done it. He's already done it before. Turn back to Joshua chapter 10 in just a second and I'll close. He's already done it, y'all. I hear some crazy preachers. I listen to all kinds of preachers just to get different perspectives and listen to what they're saying. And they're all the time saying, God don't kill nobody. God don't do this. God don't put stuff on people. They're, some people, they're, they're on some bad dope. They either don't read the Bible or don't believe it or they take it for granted their listeners don't. Let me read you the Bible. Joshua. Chapter 10, verse 11. And it came to pass, as they fled from before Israel and were in the going down to Beth Horon, that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them. Under Ezekiel, and they died. The Lord cast down great stones from heaven and killed them people. That God does not fit into our modern world of inclusivity and tolerance. If you're trying to fit in with this world, you'll never be right with God and never do nothing for God. This world is not our home. We're just passing through. Our treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door and I can't fill it home in this world anymore. You know what's wrong with Christians tonight? We want to hobnob and rub shoulders with and get along with this world. It can't be done. It can't be done without compromise. The only way you can do it is compromise. You stand for God, they will throw you out. That's what's coming on this world, y'all. That's what's coming on this world. We ought to thank God we're saved. Thank God we're saved. This coronavirus, nobody knows. Since we were here this morning, there had, was a case confirmed in Western North Carolina, Watauga County, up near Boone. Closest one to here is Spartanburg, unless there's others here that we don't know about, and they probably are. We don't know. We don't know. Things like will get way worse. All we can do is live for the Lord, put Him first, and He'll bless you for it. Let's bow our head in prayer. Every head bowed. Every eye's closed. Come on, Miss Desi, and play something right quickly. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Our Heavenly Father, I pray for everybody here and everybody that's listening. 
around the world or country where they're at. That you'd speak to our hearts in these dark days. God, give us strength. God, give us help. God, give us faith. Give us boldness. and Help every one of us right now to rededicate our lives to you. And as then, like Brother Wayne said last night, give 100%. Lord, let us finish the race strong that you've given us to run. Help us to go lift up the blood-stained banner and point men to the answer, the Lord Jesus Christ. Have your way in our hearts this evening. Bless all the folks that are sick with the coronavirus. I pray that somehow they come to you and be saved. Lord, this old world's in bad, bad shape, laying underneath the judgment of God. Oh, Lord, when we see all these things that's going to happen, God, help us to stand for you and live right in these dark days. Lord, we're, we're optimistic that you're going to come and take us out of this old world in the blessed hope of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever you do, we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Are we still praying tonight?